Thanks. Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Now, uh, just to start with, like, do the usual housekeeping in terms of squad health and everything, is there any players you're keeping an eye on this week? Have you had full deck to choose from the weekend? Yeah, no, full deck. Uh, really good last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it's really exciting, I think, to get into game week. You can feel it's gone up another level today in terms of, of, of our prep and stuff. So, yeah, look, we're really excited and uh, full deck to choose from. I know you have the, the squad you're working with at the moment, but later on in the tournament, are you looking to possibly bring in the, the sevens girls who aren't available at the moment? No, nope, no, nope, we're really happy with the, the 32 that we've selected. I think uh, we've rewarded um, girls that have played really well at club, into pro and Celtic Cup, and um, yeah, um, it's it's a very exciting young group, and um, I think it's it's probably fair to say it's it's kind of starting our journey in relation to just continuing on from Japan a little bit. I think last year's Six Nations was um, a tight time, whereas we got a good chunk of work done in Japan, and then obviously girls going full time and uh, into November, um, you can already feel a little bit of a good bit of a difference. So um, yeah, I think for this group, I think it's really important that they know that they're all incredibly valued, and uh, we're really really happy with them. How big of a difference do you see between this time last year when you were a lot of people coming together as a group for the first time, coaching team included, and since then you've uh, had a Six Nations, yeah. Japan, and now with, you know, professional it's, athletes as well? There's no comparison in terms of everything. The players are so tuned in to what high performance means. I think now, I think that was definitely something that we learned a lot about in Japan. Um, and I think in terms of, like, we were only like just commenting as a coaching group, even at the end of last week, we were talking about a week out from the Six Nations, where we were at this time last year, um, we are definitely improved a huge amount. But that's the same for every every team. Um, you know what I mean? Like it does, Every team has nearly gone professional now. Every team has got numbers that are professional. Every team is in the Six Nations has been to a World Cup last September. We haven't. So um, we're very aware of where we are. And uh, I think that's probably what the most exciting thing about this weekend is that we get to see where we are kind of on an, another scale. Like we. We feel like we're in a really good place, but on the flip of that, you know, I'd, I'd imagine Wales is saying the same. Yeah, and that kind of leads to what I was going to say there, where a lot of people are probably expecting to see a better Ireland this year when there's been an advancement in professionalism and everything. But likewise, Wales are 12 months further down the line with their own professional programme. Yeah, hugely. And, you know, they beat us last year at home, the RDS. They had a really good World Cup campaign. They got to the quarterfinals. And they've got loads of threats across the park. So for us, I think we've just got to concentrate on us and, and ourselves and our journey. We've got to not think about where other teams are in theirs. And we've just got to go and, and try and implement what we're trying to do. I think that's the most important thing. We've got to go and express ourselves. We talk about being brave um, and not to go into our comfort zone. And um, we can't measure ourselves with other teams until we get to a stage where, um, you know, we're the the evolution of this game is plateaued and that's not happening at the moment. So, you know what I mean? It's very difficult to see where, where all the other countries are. You know, you're talking about post-World Cup cycles, you're talking about a new instruction of full-time contracts, you're talking about, you know, games that are improving all the time, Celtic Cup, Interpros. It's very difficult to try and compare yourself off the back of, of other teams. I think we've just got to look after ourselves and continue to keep working. Thanks. Huge. I'm actually so excited. We had a really good session this morning and um, they're young, which is fine. And I'm not going to say we're still in transition. We're not. I think we've got to we've got to get out of that mindset now. That's probably as a, a support base, as a fan base, as a media, as, as, a, as a, you know, a group within within this, this this building. I think we've got to talk about, you know, the standards that we set for ourselves and continuously push them and keep trying to raise the ceiling. And I think once we can do that, that's all we'll ask. But there's there's definitely huge potential. And I suppose as a coaching group, you just want them to go and fulfill that. You want them to go and get better all the time. And, um, and I think, you know, if we can go and enjoy the occasion like Saturday on the back of a really good couple of weeks for the RFU, then, you know, that puts us in a really good place, gives them confidence. and. But I've no doubt there'll be nerves. There will. They're young and they're, but they're exciting. And uh, we've got to back that talent and hopefully um, they can show the world what they're good at. How do you feel the girls have to lift those professional contracts and handle that day to life down there? Yeah, good. You know, you chat away to them. Look up. You know, I'm not full time, so I'm, I'm working away. So um, when I came into camp, it was really interesting to see their their mindset shifted a lot. Their ability to. Um, 
to train at a higher level and it was funny I, I noticed that hugely for the few girls that were contracted that played the Interpros from Munster perspective and um, their ability to go and go longer was really good their their knowledge was really good but their core skills were had improved immensely over a very short period of time I think that's probably what's so exciting is when you look at this group as a whole and we get into a space where more girls are contracted and it's more of a full-time program then you know you'd like to think that we're in a really good place Take one more for the live section, if anyone wants to come. Please, just quickly for myself. Hello. Um, what kind of brands do you think the girls get now on, on the back of Alan Farrell's success with the men's and, of course, the under-20s as well? Yeah, look, huge. I think it was a great buzz last weekend uh, for the men. And then, obviously, the 20s go back to back. I think that's been um, a huge inspiration for us. But the men are three or four years into that, that kind of cycle and that journey. We're not. We're starting. So, But there was definitely, you know, a big buzz. We trained here in the same facility last week I think that's huge the girls are walking down the corridor and getting coffee at the same time as the men there's conversations happening over and back and you know Johnny's out and kicking last weekend and the girls got to go down and talk to him about it and and they were really good with their time so from that point of view it's brilliant we're going to soak up all that information and learn and keep developing but um, yeah look, they're like they're a on a different path in terms of where they're going. They're literally a couple of months out from a, from a World Cup. The 20s are kind of the same in terms of they've got a Junior World Cup coming this year. We're kind of at the start of this World Cup cycle. So we've got to think about where we're going and the direction that we want to go. We definitely want to continue to get better. We have a lot to get better from, from Japan. Um, and, um, and that's all we can do.